Hey watch friends, today we're going to be checking out a prototype from the Irish microbrand Martin Design. This is their upcoming Supernatural. This one's going to be launching on Kickstarter on March 12th of 2024. And I'll of course have a link down in the video description if you care to check that out. This is a regulator style watch and it's going to be launching at only $270, which we'll unpack that as we go through. Before we get started, for admin matters, if you saw that pop up, despite this being a prototype, they don't intend for me to send it back, so I of course want to be transparent about that. Let's go ahead and get straight into the specs. The case on this, measured from the 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock, is coming in at 40.1 millimeters. The bezel sits, sits dead on, completely flush. The lugs are a strap change friendly, 20 millimeters. The lug to lug is a nice wrist versatile, 46.1 millimeters. The total thickness isn't bad at all. It's only coming in at 11.4 millimeters, and that is inclusive of this crystal. The crystal is actually a sapphire crystal with a very subtle dome to it. It almost looks flat, however, if you roll it across a desk, you can tell that it is domed. The movement is beating away with a Miyota 82S7. For those who aren't familiar, which I know that's not one I have a lot of familiarity with, it is an automatic. It is um, still going to be, uh, have hacking, hand winding, all that kind of good stuff, despite the fact that it is an 8 series movement. You also get the 42 hour power reserve that you typically would with a 9 series that we're more accustomed to on this channel. But this one is going to be a lower beat, uh, so it's 21,600 beats per hour. However, with being a small second, to me, that's really a non-issue. Uh, you really can't see any kind of stutter or anything with uh, that ticking second there. As far as the water resistance, it's coming in at 50 meters or 5 atmospheres, which I think in keeping with the dressier styling of this is plenty respectable. I always like to have 100 or above, however, not a big deal in my opinion. The weight on this factory included strap is only coming in at 66.7 grams, so really quite light, and as we'll see as we wear it throughout in the video, it really disappears pretty well on wrist, despite the fact that it still has a good bit of presence. So with all the basic specs out of the way, let's get a better feel for what this one's like to live with. This is going to be launching with two color variants. There's the Triskel, which is this Celtic style that we're looking at today. There's additionally a Caterix, which is a silver with blued hardware version. There will also be two stretch goals of a red and blue that are based on that Caterix version. So it's going to be more similar to that in terms of texture. As far as the layout of these, what they're going to have in common is they're both going to have prominent sub dials, so both styles of these. The sub dials are going to be representing at closer to the nine o'clock side. That's where you have your 24 hour uh, indicator. And then at closer to the three o'clock side is where you have your running second. Your primary hand, as we're going to talk about, is uh, you're going to be your minute hand. And that's part of the regulator function there. When you look at the sub dials, while they're going to vary between the color variants, you can see with this one, it has a lighter gray with a darker gray kind of border accent. Both of those are going to have a difference between the texture as well as the coloration between the border as well as the center. And I think in that sense, not only does it help for contrast with the hands, but I really think it is aesthetically pleasing as well. You can see that for the 24 hour, as well as the second, there are nice hashes applied. In the case of the 24 hour, those hashes are going to represent your odd numbers. So you have your printed numerals, and then you have those hashes that are actually your odd digits for the 24 hours. As you move out towards the perimeter there, you can see that both of these are around both of the dials. There is a nice polished border that's applied as well. So that's a good touch. In the case of this, uh, this uh, particular version, you can see that it does have Celtic printing across. In the case of the Caterix, it's going to be more of like a sand uh, type texture, though it's more of like a pebble, I guess. Uh, it's more aggressive than typical sand textures would be. So those are going to vary not only in color, but in actual texture as well. As far as um, the location of the nameplate, that's going to be the same on both of these. Here you can see that it says the Triskel, and that's running at around the uh, 1 to 2 o'clock uh, position or 1 to 3 o'clock uh, position there. However, with that being said, it's going to have the individual name of each. So this one says Triskel, that one will say Caterix. At the 12 o'clock position, you can see that they do have an applied logo. There will be some adjustments to that logo on the, um, the finalized version. So I believe they're going to thin that out some. Additionally, for the dial pattern, they're actually going to make some updates to this. I believe it's just in terms of the coloration or the overall finishing of that, but they'll confirm in the details on their Kickstarter campaign. As you move out to the perimeter, you can see that this does include a rehot, and that's where you're going to have your individual hashes as well as your numerals. Those numerals do flip for your minute, so as you move down below 15 minute, you can see that it flips to where you can read that as far as the dial-up standard on wrist, which I think is always a good call for that. Makes definitely an easier process for legibility. 
As far as the hardware, this is, of course, with the regulator style, as we already talked about, going to only have one you know, of your traditional uh, primary hands. So you're going to have the one minute hand. That is what I would describe as like a spyglass uh, kind of hand. So it's a relatively delicate, very long um, hand, and then it has that kind of spyglass counterbalance on the other end, which I think looks nice and is keeping with the style. For the hour as well as the second hand, those are going to be in the subdials, as we already talked about, the 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock respectively. Those are both going to be what I've described as like a polished sword. They're a little bit more of a fanciful uh, sword um, with uh, kind of the almost spade-like uh, kind of waves uh, out to that. But I think those, uh, those look nice overall, and those are well chosen for this. In all three of the hands, they are going to have nice caps on them, so you can see they're cleanly finished and I think well incorporated, especially for this prototype offering. Shifting over to the bezel. The bezel, as we've already looked at, is not only fixed, but it is actually flush to the case. The bezel itself is going to be a full polish. It does have an ledge out on the outside to match up with the case, and then it has a nice steep slope and kind of cut uh, into that as you go up towards that crystal. You can see here, well incorporated all the way around, and I think it's in fitting with the sports kind of dress styling for this. And the fact that they did polish there, and as we'll see with the uh, the case for the uh, that brushing there, that uh, gives a nice, uh, nice contrast, so I think that's well done also. As to the case shape itself, this is what I would describe as kind of like a heavily uh, cut slab. So you can see you have nice lug, uh, lug, cuts ins, lug cut ins there, uh, however this is otherwise just a slab kind of construction. The finishing is going to be horizontal brushing, so running front to rear on the case, and it runs the length of that over to the lugs. And again, I think in kind of having that polished sandwich with the bezel as well as the underside, that uh, gives a nice, nice contrast and I think visually works well. The mid case itself is relatively thin. You know, as we talked about the overall um, presence of this at, on, uh, at under 11 and millimeters on my calipers, they state 12, um, however, I'm definitely getting skinnier, is I think pretty respectable in and of itself. But this mid case, the way that they did this with having kind of an undercut here, as well as a, a relatively um, thin uh, case back and then having a medium sized uh, bezel and then of course that crystal, the actual mid case itself is pretty thin uh, overall. So I think the specs are a little bit misleading here of it wears even thinner than it otherwise would appear. It does have downturn lugs and as you can see, they come pretty well flush with the back of the case. Shifting over to the silhouette view, you can see the lugs themselves, they're fairly delicate. Um, they're definitely on the skinnier side, but that's really accentuated or exaggerated by that chamfer cut that you have. So you have that polished chamfer cut that runs down the length there, and that really visually just slims these out more than they actually are. And I think they're well sized to this. There's going to be no crown guard on the uh, crown side. As far as the crown location, this one, as I'm sure you already noticed, is atypical in that it's, it is at the two o'clock position instead of the typical three with kind of the rotation of that movement. As far as the crown itself, it's coming in at 5.8 millimeters, which sounds like it's on the smaller side. However, with where this is at in terms of access, as well as in particular, this double knurling that this has applied, as you can see here, this, while it doesn't look like much, that coin edge style knurling that this has, it actually is extremely, extremely grippy. I haven't had any issues, and especially because it's tucked away so it doesn't chafe on the wrist or anything like that, but it's so easy to grip a hold of there. So no problems whatsoever um, with that, and I think it's actually well-sized to the case, not only for proportions, but also functionally. The As you already saw there, it is a push-pull um, construction, which again, I think is in keeping with the dressier style. And then it is signed on the exterior with their MD logo, and that again is going to be contrasting finishes as well. Shifting over to the case back, the case back on this is a screw-in construction. The uh, primary finish is going to be circular brushing running all the way around the perimeter. Additionally, you can notice that it has a fairly bold uh, milled text going around that gives you the basic information. And then in the middle, of course, you can't miss that this does have a decent size exhibition window. And then in the middle of that, you have you know, decent decoration for what it is as far as for being an 8 Series Miyota movement. It's actually not bad looking with uh, still Geneva striping. And then they did a custom blue rotor that is kind of skeletonized there. And I think that's nice looking as well. So certainly it's not the fanciest in the world, but I don't think it looks bad at all, especially at a sub $300 price point. As far as the strap, here on my six and a half inch wrist, you can see that this fits quite nicely. There's still a lot of presence to uh, the, uh, the watch head. The straps themselves are going to be from 20 millimeters at the lugs down to uh, 18 millimeters at the buckle. So a modest taper, and I think that's well chosen to this with being uh, at the 40 millimeter size, I wouldn't have wanted to see them go down to 16. I think that would have been a little bit too delicate as far as for the uh, strap aesthetic. 
the straps that are included are uh, leather. They are a distressed kind of um, finish for this. So this actually out of the box had that kind of distressed look. And I really actually think it's aesthetically uh, quite pleasing. And again, I think it fits with the overall design and style. This particular one has matching stitching for it, which again, I think um, incorporates nicely. I don't think I would have wanted a contrast stitch, especially with that distressing. I think it would have been a little bit too much. They do have quick release spring bars on the back, so nice and easy to change those around. And then of course, with 20 millimeter lugs, you're gonna have plenty of options available. As far as the buckle, the buckle is a flared type construction, and it is going to be uh, a brushing in the middle and then polished uh, on the uh, outside edges of that, and it is signed in the middle there as well. All right, so now that we have all that out of the way, let's go ahead and bring in some comps for some different reasons. First, I wanna bring it in. Here it is next to another fixed bezel. This is a 40 millimeter Citizen, and just gives, just gives you an idea as far as overall sizing. This Citizen, especially with being a white dowel, I think generally wears or presents on the larger side for a 40, and you can see these are relatively comparable um, with this having kind of the different with the rehot as well as that. I think it visually shrinks it just a little bit. But one of the reasons I wanted to bring this in is you can see here just an idea with this one of white with blued hardware next to this, just to kind of give you a little bit of an idea what that silvery white of the Caterix would look like there. Next up, just bringing in another uh, unconventional. So this, you can see here, this is the um, Alto 8 Roto, and this is a Wandering Hour. You can see just the difference of, an, of uh, methods of reading here. So in the case of the Roto, I do think this is a little more intuitive uh, with Wandering Hours, where you just have that 10 pointing up, and you can see 1045 there. Whereas here, you have to actually go, so first off, it's a 24 hour, so then you have to um, go, now here we're looking at 24, and then you get a look to see where you're oriented at for your minute, and then you have to see um, your second there. So I think this is a little more uh, involved, but that's just the nature of the different style of watch, but wanted to give you an idea there, and that was a 39 millimeter. And then here it is just next to a fairly traditional or um, kind of stand-in. This is a Zelos Mako, and this is a 40 millimeter dive watch, just I'm sure everybody has uh, one that they can relate to size-wise for that to help to give an idea. All right, so hopefully now you have a much better feel as far as what this watch is actually like, but let's go ahead and wrap things up with my personal view of the positives, critiques, as well as the summary. First for the positives. First thing we have to address is the price. $270 for a microbrand regulator. There's not a whole lot of options you have out there to begin with for regulators in the microbrand space, let alone at well under $300. I really don't think you'd go wrong. That's an extremely attractive price point. The styling, you know, certainly I get that this one's not going to be for everyone, and I actually would have picked, uh, if given the option, the Caterix as far as the um, silver, the whitish, uh, with the blued hardware. I'm just a sucker for that. However, I've got to say this Celtic pattern, while it's bold, I think it's actually very attractive. It looks a lot better in person and on wrist than I had expected that it would, and it's much more to my liking than I expected, and I think that this is going to get more wear time than I was initially uh, foreseeing. Additionally, comfort-wise, I think this is going, going to be comfortable for most people. It hugs to the wrist well, it's very light, it's easy to disappear, relatively thin, nothing to complain about there. And then by the same token, the sizing, at just over a hair over 40 millimeters, I think it's going to work for most wrists. It has a short lug to lug of only 46 millimeters, plus being on a strap, you really don't have to worry about any kind of extension or overhang. So I think it'll work down fairly fairly well smaller than my six and a half inch wrist, but you can go a fair amount larger than my wrist as well and not have any issues. So that's nice. As far as some of the critiques, you know, the, the first thing is just going to be the nature of regulator. As we already talked about there with looking at it next to the wandering hour, it does have some legibility adjustment. You know, you have to get used to looking to see your hour on this dial, then looking to see your minutes, and then if you care about the seconds, looking to that dial. So it does have that, uh, that aspect that goes into it. Part of that too is the nature of the overlapping that you're going to have here is when you're looking from the three o'clock to the six o'clock, which that is our seven o'clock, that is going to be in the morning. Um, but that, uh, that being said, you know, those hours you don't actually have the direct, so you got to kind of guess a little bit there. Most people probably aren't going to be using it too much um, during those hours, but it's something to be aware of. Additionally, um, though, with that, I do want to mention, and somebody already asked this question, the text is on the smaller side. So for those who um, have to wear readers, this is probably going to be a little harder to read than your typical watch because you're not going to have the large three hands and trying to actually tell. You can go by the orientation of the hand, but it takes some getting used to, um, and it's not going to be as intuitive as many would. So that's something to be aware of. Not really anything that's a fault of this watch, but those are things as far as legibility to be aware of. As far as this particular prototype, you can notice there in the center, as that hooks up with that yellow, 
there's just kind of an off color. So that might be one of the things that they're um, trying to uh, clean up or plan to clean up there. That one shifts so it's not really the same color yellow as it hooks up, which I believe that that's an extension of that and should hook up. So that's something um, that, you know, like I said, they're already going to make some adjustments to this to um, better the uh, the pattern on this particular version. Um, but that is something that I noticed there. And then finally, as you'd expect on prototypes, you can have minor quality control things. You know, this one has just a spec there, as you can see right above the, the 22. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty minor, pretty typical. Um, and being a prototype, it's not unexpected. Um, however, it is something I saw it, so I want to be uh, make sure that you're aware of it as well. So where does that leave us overall? You know, at the end of the day, like I said, I think this is a well-designed regulator. I think it's attractive. At the price point of under $300. If you've been in the market for a regulator, I really don't think you can go wrong with these if you like the styling. Of course, that's going to be the big wild card. But if you do, which uh, which style do you like? Do you like the more bold version or are you going for the more subdued and of the subdued if they unlock the stretch goals? Are you looking at the silver, the red, or the blue version? Drop a comment. Let me know what you think. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you did, tap that like button. If you haven't already done so, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.